What's up everyone? Welcome back. I'm Nick. In this video, we're going to talk about scroll views. Now, it's pretty self-explanatory. A scroll view is a view that we can add to the screen so that we can scroll. Uh, but in SwiftUI, it's actually super powerful. We can customize it so that we can scroll horizontally or vertically. And we're even going to take it one step further. We're going to embed for each statement, which we learned in the last video, into our scroll view to create some super dynamic screens with just a few lines of code. So I think it's gonna be super awesome. I don't know if I just drank too much coffee or if scroll views are actually super cool, uh, but let's take a look and let me know in the comments if you think they're awesome or you think I drank too much coffee. Of course, you guessed it, we're back in our Xcode project. Like we always do, let's create a new file for the code in this video. Right click the navigator, new file. It's always going to be a Swift UI view in this course. And today we're going to talk about scroll views. So let's call it scroll view bootcamp. Hit create. Go ahead and click resume on the canvas once it's all connected. And let's get coding. Now in this course, I've already covered V stacks and H stacks. I've also already covered for each loops. And so those are kind of prerequisites to this video. And that's why I've been doing this course in this order. So I'm going to assume that you already know how to use those items. And let's get started by adding a V stack to our app. And let's start by just adding a rectangle to the V stack. And let's give it a frame with a height of maybe uh, 300. So we have our basic rectangle here and let's copy and paste this three times. So as you can see already, the, the rectangles are going off screen. So how do we make this view scrollable? Well, really simply, we put this V stack into a scroll view. So I'm going to type in scroll view, open the brackets, and then I'm going to cut this V stack and just paste it into the scroll view. And it's that simple to make our screen scrollable. So to make this scrollable, you actually need to click the live preview button up here on top of the preview. And then you can actually scroll up and down on this content. And if you would imagine these black rectangles to be images, well, this is a lot like the Instagram feed, right? You had a picture and maybe a caption and a picture and a caption and you could scroll up and down. So if we had a whole bunch of rectangles here, you could imagine that we could keep scrolling. And now instead of copying and pasting rectangle a whole bunch of times, let's add a for each loop in here. So let's get rid of these bottom two rectangles. Let's just do one. Let's add a for each loop. Let's use the range option. Let's do zero dot dot less than 50. Hit enter on the content. I'm going to change this to index as we usually do. And then I'm going to put the rectangle into this for each loop. Let's give it a dot fill and let's do color dot blue. And now in our preview, we can scroll down. And now you can see in our preview that there are 50 rectangles that we can scroll through. So you could imagine that if we had a data set instead of just 0 to 50 and we looped through all that data, this could get really, really useful. Now, a couple things I want to point out. When we scroll, we have this indicator on the right side that you probably noticed. And we can turn off that indicator if we want to. So when we initialize a scroll view, and we open the parentheses, there's actually two completions here. And there's one with just content and one with an axis shows indicators and content. So when we typed in just scroll view with a brackets, we just use the default content version. But this time let's use the other one. So let's press enter on that. Let's keep it dot vertical. Let's keep the shows indicators to true. And then where this placeholder content is, I'm just going to cut the V stack from our first scroll view, paste it into our new one, and let's delete our first scroll view. And now with this scroll view initializer, we have additional parameters. So shows indicators, that is that little icon on the right side. And if we turn that to false, 
we can then scroll and we don't have any indicator on where we are. So, so on short lists, sometimes developers like to have uh, the indicator, but on like the Instagram feed, they like that to appear like it's infinity, so you don't actually see any indicator. And of course, as you guessed, we can also change this from vertical to horizontal. Now, if we're gonna go horizontal, we also need our data to be in an H stack for a horizontal stack, otherwise it will look weird. So let's change this to horizontal, and let's change the V stack to an H stack. And it looks a little funny because we haven't set a width on our rectangles. So if this rectangle had a width of 300 and a height of 300, we could then start scrolling through like this. Now before we go, I wanna give you one real world example on how we can embed scroll views in scroll views to make really cool screens. So let's delete what we have and start fresh. Let's add a regular scroll view. Open the brackets. In this scroll view, let's add a V stack like we started with. And let's add a for each statement with data of zero to less than maybe 10. In the content, we will use index, and we're gonna add a rounded rectangle with a corner radius of 25. Let's set a frame on these rectangles. Let's do a width of 200, a height of 150, and the alignment we don't need, so let's delete it. Let's give them a shadow with a radius of 10. And then the shadow is kind of going over each of these, so I wanna add some padding around it after the shadow, so let's call it padding. That looks a little better. And then let's make these rectangles white, so let's call dot fill color dot white. So now we have our template rectangles going up and down that we can scroll on. And let's take this a little further. So on this for each, in each of these rows, let's add a scroll view this time let's use the other completion so that we can change it to horizontal let's put these shows indicators as false and for the content let's add an h stack because we're going to go left and right let's open the brackets and let's put that rounded rectangle inside so now we have a vertical scroll view that inside has a v stack and has 10 rows because we're doing for each 0 to 10. So we can scroll on the 10 rows. And in each row, we have another scroll view that's horizontal. And we have an H stack where we're putting one rounded rectangle. So we can, sc so we can scroll on each row and there's only one rectangle. Let's complete this view by putting another for each loop on each row. So inside this H stack, let's do for each Let's do the data, we'll do zero to less than, let's do 20. And again, we're gonna press enter. Let's put the index here, and then let's put a rounded rectangle inside this for each. So I know this code might be getting a little confusing for some of you, but once you understand what's going on here, you'll see how easy it was to make such a cool screen. We can now scroll left and right, we can scroll up and down. And this is the template where you have a lot of apps like the Spotify app, the Netflix app, where instead of just looping on numbers from zero to 10 and zero to 20, you could loop on data sets and then you could put all of your songs, all of your movies in each of these. So each one could have a different picture, a different color, a different title. And you can get a really cool screen with just a few lines of code. One thing I wanna mention before we finish this video is that when you have a V stack, a regular V stack and a regular H stack, all of the content inside that V stack will load as soon as the screen is created. So that's usually fine if we have small data sets. But what if we had this V stack where we changed this for each and there was a hundred rows? Well, when the screen loads, we can only see maybe row one, two, three, four, maybe a little bit of the fifth row. We can't see all 100, so we don't really need all 100 to load as soon as this screen appears, right? 
Because what if, imagine we were downloading images in each of these cells. So every time this cell came on, we had to download the, that image for that movie or that song. Well, we would be downloading a ton of data, even though we only really need what's on the screen right now. So in SwiftUI, there's a super convenient way to basically fix that. So instead of calling vstack, we can just call lazy vstack. It's literally that easy. All we need to do is add the word lazy in front of a vstack or an hstack. And by making it lazy, it will basically only create that row or that item when it needs to because it's lazy. So when we have 100 rows and it's in a lazy vstack, we're only going to create these first couple rows and behind the scenes off the app, it's actually creating these rows as we scroll through. So instead of loading our app and having 100 create at the same time, we make it lazy, which will make our app more efficient and also avoid downloading all excess data, right? Because what if the user opens this screen and never scrolls to the bottom? Well, we never really needed to download that data. So when you have large data sets, I recommend using lazy stacks whenever possible. And we can do the same thing for the H stack and make it lazy. And most of the time, you'll never even notice if it's lazy or not because behind the scenes, it knows exactly when to create these items. So they'll be created just before they come onto the screen. So that's it for this video. This was a quick intro to scroll views. We also touched on lazy stacks. And now you guys know how to handle larger data sets and make your views scrollable, both vertically and horizontally. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed it, if you want to put a smile on my face, and hit the like button if you learned something. So as always, I'm Nick, this is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you guys in the next video.